Hello and welcome to In Sickness and in Health, Writing Life Through the Essay, generously hosted by the Oxford Centre for Life Writing. Refreshments are available in your respective kitchens and I hope you will join me for a large glass of metaphorical wine after we have concluded today's event. On a more serious note, this symposium has been in the works for about a year now, under, we are all aware, challenging and unprecedented conditions. Thank you to Dr Kate Kennedy and Dr Catherine Collins for their faith and support in both me and this event from its very early stages. I must also thank Dr Alice Little for coordinating with me on the practicalities of organising this event and adapting it to our newfound digital reality. Finally, to Caroline, Rowena, Dr Marie Allett, Dr Merve Emre and Dame Professor Hermione Lee, I extend my heartfelt thanks for your eagerness and invaluable contributions to this symposium. I should now like to briefly outline the nature and motivations for today's event. As anyone who has glanced at the programme of papers being presented today will gather, scholarship on the essay is both exceptionally broad in terms of historical reach and its thematic concern. Indeed, with the recent publication of the impressive On Essays, Montaigne to the Present, edited by Thomas Kershaw and Catherine Murphy, and the forthcoming Cambridge Companion to the essay, edited by Cara Whitman and Evan Kinley, of which Dr Emre's paper is taken. It is hard not to conclude that scholarship on the essay is reaching a fever pitch not seen since the 1990s. This excitement, though, also raises a number of questions and concerns. There is, as Kershaw and Murphy identify, a deep-lying ambivalence between the essay as a strenuous weighing up a sober examination, and the opposed sense of something tentative, preliminary and provisional. That is, between the essay as try or attempt and the essay as trial. As we look with excitement to the creative and critical potentialities of the essay form and its adaptive and perhaps liberalistic values, we must caution ourselves that it is the same form that wields polemic, rhetoric and persuasion above all else. We have then, with this ethical tension, some difficult problems to address as regards the form that our scholarship seeks to centre. What are its limitations, its histories, its aesthetics, and indeed its politics, if it has one at all? What does the cool sense of Ali Smith's artful, for example, have in common with the polemical Islamophobia of Martin Amos's The Second Plane? The questions of genre are challenging and often exhausting, but as today's paper will show, this is not simply a case of abstract philosophising, but vitally important for the tangible world. The relationship of the essay form to the medical humanities goes some way to clarifying the real world importance of asking such questions like, what actually is an essay? Hence, the unintended title of today's symposium, In Sickness and in Health. This off-spoke marriage vow, to me, reveals the simple fact that we are inextricably wedded to the essay as a form, in journalism, academia, bureaucracy, education, autobiography, and so on. The essay offers a space for the sick, facilitating confession, consolation and catharsis, and yet we also turn to it in health, for vibrancy, clarity and eccentricity. The narrative construction of the essay recurs again and again. Of course, whether we ought to return to it is a separate question. And Dr Emre's paper goes some way to challenging our relaxed conception of the essay as a product of the individual personality. Conversely, a number of the other papers will show us the ways in which the individual cannot help but impose their personalities, illusory or no, on their essayistic narrative. What we lack in intimacy and proximity through today's online event, I hope we can make up for in other ways. By making this symposium digitally available, we can reach a much wider audience and offer a coherent resource package that, I hope, may help academics and students alike in their own research on the essay form. Please do reach out to me and the panellists with your own thoughts and ideas. It is my fervent hope that this is only the beginning and that we can develop a larger and more expansive conference on essay scholarship in the future. For now, though, I wish you all a safe few months and I hope that you enjoy a wonderful set of papers on all things essay. Thanks.